Today I'm going to be using this test coupon, which is two parts, representing the front and back of the watch, to see if I can make it waterproof to 100 meters. Hi, my name is John and welcome back. Before I get started, I recently set up a Patreon account and two people signed up to support me, so I just wanted to say thank you very much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Now, this episode is about figuring out how to size the O-ring and how to get the right geometry for the O-ring that will be between the front and the back of the watch case. Now, the purpose of the O-ring, of course, is to keep water out and I have created these two test pieces that have no opening on the front, but when I screw them apart, you can see that there are the two halves and the O-ring goes right there. So what I'm gonna do is try to figure out what the right dimensions are for the O-ring and then make these test parts and then test them to depth. This is the CAD file for the test specimens that I used in the uh, previous video where I milled the threads. You can see there are the two parts here. And I modified it by adding this area here, which effectively becomes the slot for the gland. If I turn this on and we look at the cross section, like so, you can see that we have in here effectively a slot for the gland. Now, to figure out the size of this slot, as well as the size of the O-rings, I found some equations. The first one is about stretch, so the idea is that you don't want to stretch the O-ring too much because if you stretch it, you start to reduce the cross-sectional area. So ideally you want to have no stretch, but they do allow up to 5% stretch. And the main reason for having some stretch is to help the O-ring stay in place while you're assembling the part. So because of that, less is better, and ideally I want to use 0% stretch. The O-ring is going to, let me show you, it's going to fit into this area here, or at least that's the, the idea that I had. And so the diameter of this is about 26 millimeters, so I chose to use an O-ring that had a cross-section of 0.7 millimeters in diameter, and an inside diameter of 26 millimeters. And as I mentioned, I thought this would be zero stretch, but I was wrong, and I'll explain why later. The next thing that we need to look at is the gland depth. So that is the depth, the distance from here to here. You can see I have it at 0.56 millimeter. So the question is, how did I calculate that? That's based on this equation here, which is about the amount that you want to squeeze the O-ring. In other words, how much you want to compress it. This is shown with the O-ring not compressed at all. And you can see that the values here vary quite a bit. I found values between 5 and 35%. I decided to go for the middle of this range, which is 20%, or the bottom of this range, also 20%. This is the equation we just looked at. This is one of the two ranges. I chose this and also chose 20%. So given this equation, I want to solve for this value. That's what this algebra is here. And then plugging in 0.7 as the diameter, and then 20% as the compression ratio, the result is 0.56 millimeters for the gland depth. The next thing we need to do, given the gland depth and the diameter of the O-ring, is we need to calculate the width of the slot. And so the idea here is we do that based on a fill ratio. The fill ratio is how much of the volume of this rectangular slot is filled with the O-ring when it's compressed. And so the way we do that is we use the volume of the O-ring when it's not compressed, as well as the volume of the gland, with this equation here. So the thing I need to do is first calculate the cross-section of the O-ring when it's not compressed. So that's this right here. And then we just do some more math right here. And what we end up with is a width of 0.92 millimeters. So that's how I ended up with the width and depth of this feature. This width is actually, let me go back to the cross section and show the other part as well. So this, the width is actually not to this right here, but all the way to this right here. So the width is from there to there. Here I'm taking off the top five thousandths of an inch of the stock using my tri-fly from Shrum Solutions. Then cutting out a pocket that does not go all the way through 
And the main purpose of this pocket is to be able to have air inside so that during the depth test it can pick up air if air leaks past the O-rings. And then I'm doing a final cleanup of the walls, which isn't really necessary. This is using a small diameter end mill to cut the lip for the O-ring itself. This is basically the gland slot, or at least part of the slot, the other side is the thread. And then removing material around the outside, and the main purpose for doing this is so that it's easier to see the slot between the two halves, so that I can tell, for example, if air is leaking during the pressure test. And then the thread milling. What I didn't realize is that my air compressor had died, the regulator had died, and so here it lost pressure. And therefore what I had to do is I had to reset the machine and then very carefully back this away from there so I wouldn't damage the cutter. And once it was backed away, then I could raise it in Z and then rerun the program. I wasn't sure how far through the program it got, so I basically restarted the entire program. And during the first section right here, I could tell it wasn't cutting because of the sound. But then when it got to this section here, the sound changed and I could tell that it was starting to cut again. And then testing to see if it fits to make sure that the threads were cut correctly after having to restart the machine. And it's a little bit fiddly because it's only one thread, but you can see that I eventually got it and it worked just fine. So I got a 26 millimeter inside diameter O-ring, which seems to fit very nicely. Uh, that's kind of how I would expect it to fit mostly. Well, actually, it's kind of uh, sticking out there. So I want to make sure that it's all the way down. Yeah, it seems like it is. Just inspecting it. Okay, now I'm going to try. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I'm going to have to take a take a look and uh, then come back after I've had a look. I'm showing a cross section of the test parts. You can see that this is where the threads are going to be. I'm not actually modeling the thread, so you can't see it. It just looks like it's interference. And then what I did is I drew a circle, which is 0.7 millimeters in diameter, that represents the O-ring. And you can see the problem here. You can see why it didn't fit. This is the slot that I created for it, assuming that it would fit under there. But when the O-ring is hitting here, on the bottom end of the this section here where the threads are, you can see that this slot is not wide enough to allow me to push the two halves together. So what I'm going to need to do is widen this slot, probably to right about there, and then give it another test. I remade the part with a wider ledge so that the O-ring wouldn't get hung up on this. So let's see how that works. Okay, that did it. So now the next thing I want to do is uh, test this. Um, and I can feel the resistance as I, I close this a little bit more as the O-ring compresses. So what I'm going to do next with this is test it in the pressure vessel to see if this is watertight. Here's the lid of the uh, depth tester. And so what I want to do is attach this to here, which I should be able to do with this rubber band. So I'll just put this around here a few times. I changed how I was holding this on. It's now hold, held on by a couple pieces of stiff wire. And what that means is I can now uh, increase the pressure, which I'm doing. Okay, so I set this to 50 bars, 
a little bit more than 50 bars, which is equivalent to 50 meters. So I'm going to let that, I'm going to time that for one minute. So the idea is to give this time to let the air pass in through the various passages to the inside and build up air pressure on the inside of this. And then after one minute, what I will do is I will drop this down into the water and then slowly re release the pressure. And what I'm going to look for is any bubbles coming out of this, because bubbles coming out of this will indicate that there, the air that was under pressure here is now escaping. So I'll go ahead and push this down because it's been a minute now. Oops. Okay, I didn't realize I, I forgot I have to, there's a stop on here. I didn't orient it correctly, so I'm just going to hold it by hand and then slowly release the pressure. And I did see some bubbles coming out, so that means I probably need to reduce the depth of the, the hole so I get a better seal on there because, you know, some air bubbles definitely did come out. Sometimes it's better to pivot than to persevere. And one of the things I realized when I was thinking about this is that I have this slot here, basically this undercut, because the thread mill cannot make it all the way down. But then I also have this pocket that I'm going to have here for the O-ring, which is about the same depth as I had there. And so what I realized is that the green part, which is the part that has the outside threads on it, could simply continue up like this, and then I can have the pocket for the O-ring extend from there out. So I'm going to go ahead and change the design, and then give that a try, and that should work great. I've changed it so that this is a straight shoulder. This part will be straight, and then this is where the threads will be. And I made it the same size because, you know, with the clearance between the threads here and the inside, there should be enough clearance with this. So this should all work if I calculated everything correctly. And then I probably will want to have an O-ring that is slightly larger in diameter than this dimension here so that it helps retain it, but not by very much. So one thing that I did, let me go back, is I have a sketch here. Let me turn off the analysis. this one right here. And what this means is that I want an inside diameter for the O-ring to be probably 26.5. Uh, if I can get one that size, I'll have to, to uh, check. And that will give it a small amount of stretch. I could probably even go to 26.4 to give a little bit more stretch, and that should be okay. I remade the parts again with those changes. And so now I'm going to switch to a slightly larger diameter O-ring. This one is 26.5 for the inside diameter. So I'll see how that fits on there. And yeah, it does um, stay in place nicely. Well, it kind of stays in place. I had some problems keeping the 26.5 millimeter inside diameter O-ring in place. So I decided to switch back to the 26 inside diameter. And so this does hold on a little bit better. You know, one thing I'm noticing is that in a few places it's getting stuck in the thread. It doesn't want to go down. Uh, and that makes sense because of the geometry. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to put a little bit of pressure here and then rotate backwards until it drops into the thread. Okay, right there. And then I can turn it forward and it threads in place, and I can feel the resistance from the O-ring. Um, I don't see a gap there, so it's, it's looking good. So what I'll do now is, is run this through the, the depth test. Let's see what happens when I release the uh, pressure on this one. And I am seeing a small leak. You can see there's a, a bubble right there. I made a version that had a slightly shallower and wider gland. So this is with a compression ratio of 25% instead of 20. 
And so I'll go ahead and assemble that and I've already gotten the alignment correct before I started the camera. And then give this a good twist and let's uh, test to see if this is waterproof. Okay, there's a little bit of an air bubble on there but I don't think that's um, an issue. I think that's just air from putting it in because I can see some air bubbles on the aluminum away from the joint. And so I don't think that's an issue. So let me go ahead and release the uh, pressure. And I am getting a tiny air bubble at the joint. As you saw there, I did try several different things. I could probably keep trying, do a lot of trial and error, but I had this feeling that there's something I'm probably missing. I do know that one of the problems that I have is the geometry, which is that the screws go down into the area where the O-ring is actually touching the inner wall and therefore that's going to be less than a perfect seal. So this is where I'd like to get some help and suggestions of what you think I should do. There are two options I can think of. One is to just you know reduce the size, probably the width of the gland that I've created. The other one is to move the o-ring out so that it's a separate slot by itself and it's actually a face seal rather than being a seal against the inner diameter where the threads are. By moving it to be a face seal and away from the threads, I will have the ability to make the gland exactly the right depth and shape that I want it to be. And I'm hoping that'll work much better. But I would love to hear what you think, so please comment below and let me know if you have any good ideas. Again, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.